This is a demo of the VidBlaster current instant replay system as of version 2.20. And when you first start VidBlaster, it comes up to the default profile, the seven modules that you see in front of us. We're going to add a, a module, so we need to make some room for it. So let's just drag our screen and make it just a little bit wider. And we'll come up to module, click module, click add, and scroll down to video replay 2. Video Replay 2 uses the hard drive to temporarily store the video on, as opposed to Video Replay number 1, or version 1, which uh, uses RAM. So we're not going to use RAM, we're going to use hard drive. Actually, this demo machine has got an SSD in it, so it should be pretty quick. Video Replay 1, you see at the top, tells us that we can have more than one video replay. And if it gets in the way, we can click the arrow to make it disappear partially except for the title, but we don't want to do that. Now, since we don't have an actual sporting event in front of us, we need to sort of dummy up one. So I'm going to come down here to the player module, and I want to go out to my hard drive and find a video of a soccer match, because I'm a soccer guy, and we'll put that in the player module here so we can play it. Whoops, we better turn the sound way down because you don't need to hear that, that volume at all. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get that playing. And you can see we can display that in the program module. Of course, anything in the program module is recorded or streamed. So we'll come back over here to our vplay, video replay module. And we want to tell it what source we're using. Generally, we would tell it a camera, but in this case, we don't have a camera available. So we can use player one. We can actually use just about anything available, but in this case, we're going to use player one. The cut button allows us to cut directly and put whatever's in the video replay module on the screen. The trans button allows us to do a, sort of a slight transition where it uh, doesn't move quite as quickly over there. It's a little softer cut. Um, and then the other feature is this slider bar right here. I don't know if you can see on your screen when I moved up to it. It said 0s or 0 seconds. I can scroll this all the way back and pick up the last 30 seconds worth of action. And so now whatever's here in the video replay screen is what happened 30 seconds ago in our camera or in our program screen. Actually, you can, you can uh, record multiple replays on multiple cameras. They don't all have to be on the program. So we can say, OK, we want to see whatever happened 15 seconds ago. So we can drag it to about the middle. And that'll give us what happened 15 seconds ago. So we can see right now the ball is kind of coming in. And in 15 seconds, we'll see that same ball go out and come back in. There it goes out, and then it's going to come back in. It's essentially delayed for 15 seconds. And we'll switch over to that, so that switches into our program module. I'm going to pull this video ahead a little bit and get some regular game action there. That'll be a lot more fun. We'll put that up on the program screen so we can now see the players moving around on the field. I think, unfortunately, this particular clip is just a one-camera shoot. So we don't have a lot of close-up action here. Um, but if we wanted to see like that foul that just was, we would try to grab it right about here. And then that allows the announcer to build up and talk about it where the players were. And then, boom, there's the foul. And we've got it on instant replay. And then simply clicking the player or the camera would take us back to the live action. So what we did is we went to modules, we added a video replay module, and we used video replay 2 here because we know that uses hard drive to temporarily store the space where video replay 1 uses RAM. So if you're running Windows 32-bit um, and you're using this version or older, the replays, you probably want, don't want to use this one because your RAM is sort of limited to, what is it, 3.5 gigs. Um, and if you've got a fairly quick hard drive, uh, you can use Video Replay 2. Or, actually, for those of you that are sort of stuck with a, a, a Windows system that can only use three, three and a half gigs, you can set up a RAM drive 
with that extra RAM and then tell video replay um, that you want to use that as a temporary temporary folder. Um, all right, so we've got our video replay module. This is a video replay two module. It's one here, which is a little misleading, but basically it means we can have more than one. We can minimize that. We can maximize it. We can adjust the duration. So I can actually show the same clip twice. Let's say I, I want to start about 10 seconds. And here's that 10 second clip. You can see it in the program screen. I'll cut back to live action for a second, drag my slider back, and show it again. And if I'm really quick, I can drag it back again and show it a third time. The new instant replay that's still in the works will have the ability to do slow motion and allow us to save these clips. But for now, this is a great way to do instant replay in VidBlaster. For more tips from that VidBlaster guy, Check us out on YouTube, That Vid Blaster Guy, or online at thatvidblasterguy.com.